There are six small changes you can make to your desk right now to make you more productive, more energized, and more focused. And today we're going to go through them all. The average person spends 8.53 hours working every day, but most of us have never given a second thought to the environment that we're actually working in. So we're left suffering through afternoon slumps and struggling to stay productive without even realizing that there's another way. Today we're going to change that. And this is not going to be just another desk setup video walking you through all my fancy gadgets and keyboards. They might be fun, but they're not going to fix your focus. Instead, I'm going to walk you through the six evidence-backed tools I use to design my workspace based on neuroscience and psychology. Tool one is a daily declutter. The first and last thing I do each day when I sit at my desk is to get rid of the clutter. The goal is to have as little as possible in my space, and this is so simple but so powerful. A decluttered space has been shown to create mental clarity, a reduction in stress and a greater sense of control. Now, if the work that you're doing is already causing you stress, having a cluttered space is only going to make this worse. If you've got a deadline to meet, if you're doing something that's completely foreign to you, if you know that you've got a bunch of other emails and messages piling up in the background, why would you want to make that stress any worse with something that you could remove with a two minute habit like decluttering? On the really stressful days, I used to struggle with feeling out of control. It felt like my work was controlling me instead of me controlling it. Learning how to properly manage my time, focus and energy has helped massively with this. But before I developed these skills, this two minute habit of decluttering gave me back the sense of control that I couldn't get from my work. Now, when we work in mess, our attention is unwillingly consumed by that mess. You might think that you're fully focused on your work, but small parts of your attention are actually dedicated to all of that clutter around you. Studies have also shown that a decluttered environment is a clear predictor of increased sleep quality and fewer sleep related problems. This basically tells us that we can lie in bed with our eyes closed and the paper on the desk or the clothes on the floor floor still affect the way that we sleep. I don't think it's really the clothes or the papers that's the issue. It's the stress, lack of mental clarity and loss of control that the mess creates. When we address this, it's not just our sleep that improves, it's our mood, our productivity, even our time management. You're no longer spending 10 minutes every time you have to find a pen or find that document that you're looking for. If you add this up over hundreds of days and hundreds of documents, this is such a valuable habit to start forming. Tool two is to raise your laptop. And if you look at my desk, this is actually a very convenient place to film this video. You will see that my monitor is raised up on the box here and I do this for a reason. This monitor and having it on the box means that instead of looking down at my laptop, I'm actually looking up at the monitor screen. Now our eyes are able to move thanks to four muscles, one at the top, one at the bottom and one on each side. These muscles are controlled by neurons which connect to specific areas of our brain. So when we look down, our down neurons activate brain areas associated with sleepiness and calm. This actually makes us less alert. This is why your eyelids start closing as you're getting more tired and going to sleep. When we look straight ahead or more specifically upwards, our up neurons activate brain areas associated with alertness and attention. This increases our focus and energy and you can try it now. Have a go at looking down and then looking up and see if you notice the difference. Most desks have us set up with our laptops below us looking down at the screen. It's why I used to reach certain points of the day and feel like I was literally blinks away from just falling asleep. Keeping myself looking up towards my screen as well as other factors like controlling my caffeine and nutrition and sleep have really improved my afternoon alertness. So do whatever you can to adjust your screen to make it above your eyes. You could use a laptop stand or a monitor, or you could even just stack up some books and pop your laptop onto those. Tool number three is to bring nature into your workspace. And I absolutely love an indoor plant. I keep at least two on my desk and my work actually has indoor plants in their office as well. I always just enjoy them for the calmness and the bit of nature that are brought into the office, but it turns out there's so many other benefits with them as well. There is extensive research linking indoor plants to improved mood, concentration, and creativity. Workplaces with natural elements have boosted their employees' productivity by 6% and their creativity by 15%. It's also been shown to reduce anger, anxiety, depression, and fatigue, all from just a little bit of greenery. This is because nature shifts our brains into a different mode of processing that relaxes us and improves our concentration. Researchers have studied brain scans of people who are either instructed to look at a concrete rooftop 
or a green meadow. After 40 seconds, the meadow not only shifted the second group's brain into a more relaxed state, it also reduced their distraction and the number of mistakes that the group made when they were faced with a task afterwards. Now, I am shocking at keeping indoor plants alive, but the good news is that even fake plants can have a positive effect. The color green has been shown to boost productivity and innovation, while red actually decreases it. So bringing in any kind of plant, real or fake, goes a long way in replenishing our attention and focus. Tool four is to optimize your light. One of the most obvious things you will see on my desk is my Amazon light pad, which was on my wish list for a long time. And I'm actually using it to record right now, but you can see it gets quite bright. As I've dived further into the research on productivity and high performance, there is one thing that I cannot stop seeing and that is the insane power of light. When we use it right, we can control not only our focus and alertness, but our mood, our sleep, even our overall health. Most people have no idea about this and are missing out on an abundance of opportunities to make their lives better. I spoke about the impact of light on your sleep and circadian rhythm in one of my previous videos, but today I want to talk about how it affects your attention and focus. I think about each day as having three distinct phases, mostly thanks to Andrew Huberman. And I use light a little bit differently in each of these phases. Phase one is the morning and this is zero to eight hours after waking up. The aim of this phase is to expose yourself to as much light as possible. So when I'm working in this time, I turn on my overhead light, my lamp, my light pads, and I have my screen brightness at its max. Unfortunately, my windows have a glaze to them, probably to prevent me from stalking the neighbors. But if I had an open window, then I would definitely use that as well. Here's why this is so important. Overhead lights increase our alertness. The structure of our eyes means that light coming from above us stimulates certain neurons, which basically make us feel more awake and like we have more energy. On top of this, bright lights improve our ability to focus. They stimulate the release of dopamine, which makes us more motivated, as well as adrenaline, which improves our focus and alertness. Using bright light when you work also helps to minimize eye strain, which reduces sleepiness and fatigue. So if you have a window, sit near that because natural light is always brighter than any artificial light. But if not, just use the lights that you have. Consider even getting a new light. I think my light pad was about $40 from Amazon, so really accessible. And use those as much as you can in the morning to improve your focus. Phase two is the afternoon, and this is nine to 16 hours after you wake up. This is where I start reducing my light exposure. So I will rely on natural light where possible. I might just use my light pad and turn it down to the lowest level. And I also reduce my screen brightness. Now, you might ask why if bright light makes us focus, would we want to turn these down in the afternoon? The main point of this is to actually help our bodies to prepare for sleep. How well you sleep plays a massive role in how well you focus, much more so than light. So there's no point in using bright lights in the afternoon if it's just going to keep you awake at night, unless you have to pull an all-nighter. Reducing your light exposure supports an increase in melatonin as you get towards the evening, the production of serotonin, and a reduction in cortisol. All three of these things improve your ability to fall and stay asleep at night. And increased serotonin levels also help your creativity, which makes the afternoon a really great time to do creative work. Our final phase is nighttime. This is 16 to 24 hours after waking. And ideally I will be asleep in this period, but if I'm not, then you will find me with my screen at the lowest brightness, ideally not using it at all. I'll also use as little light as possible when I'm walking around the house, which drives my family absolutely nuts because I won't let them turn on the bathroom light to do their teeth. The main reason for this goes back to reducing the suppression of melatonin and being able to fall asleep better at nighttime. The other thing is that recent studies have actually shown that seeing bright light between 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. severely depletes our dopamine. Now, dopamine drives motivation, so less dopamine means less motivation. And less motivation means more resistance to doing hard things. This makes you struggle to focus for long periods of time because you can't push through those small waivers in focus that happen in any work block. 
So the main takeaway is to keep this final period for sleeping and not working on your laptop as much as possible. Tool five is to create a phone home. There is one concept from my favorite book series, A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Mass, that I think explains our relationship to our phones perfectly. In this series, mating bonds exist between two people when they are soulmates. This bond is basically a link between the minds of these two people. So they can sense each other even when they're not in the same room. Most people today have a mating bond with their phone. Even when it's not switched on, even when it's lying face down on the desk, even when there's no notifications, there is still this pull to pay attention to it, to make sure that you're not missing anything. But if we look at the research, leaving your phone on your desk is actually making you less intelligent. Researchers conducted a study where 520 students were split into three different groups. Group one left their phones in a bag in another room. Group two had their phones in their pocket and group three had their phones face down on their desk. The students then took a test and as you might imagine, group one performed the best followed by group two, followed by group three, even after controlling for other factors like their natural intelligence. When your phone is in sight or in reach, you have to allocate a certain amount of your brain capacity to actively restrain yourself from picking up your phone. So the students in group one were solely focused on the work that they were doing, but the students in group three had a bit less of their focus paying attention to the test because they were using some of that to make sure they weren't checking their phone. These devices are literally designed to be addictive. So if you want to make sure that you can produce the best quality work possible, take away the temptation and stop the constant restraint by assigning your phone a phone home. I put mine on the windowsill on the other side of my room because if I wanna check my phone, it's going to require me actually getting up from my desk and checking. It. If you know that you are really bad at this, then you could even leave your phone in the car or on the kitchen bench. Anything that's going to put as much space and as much time and resistance between you and your phone as possible. This is how you design your workspace to eliminate the distraction and keep all your mental energy for work, not resisting temptation. Tool six is your happiness boosters. And the final question to ask yourself is, does my workspace make me happy? This might sound stupid, but being in a good mood is honestly such an underrated productivity tool. Think about the last time you went into work in a state of pure positivity and happiness. You would have been more productive, more motivated, more energetic, and more resilient. Ali Abdal, a productivity expert, literally wrote a whole book called Feel Good Productivity. The most direct way to becoming and staying productive is to get yourself into a state where you're enjoying what you're doing. So add some personal touches to your desk. So my candles and my plants make me happy. I like my laptop background. I love having my books on my bookshelf next to me. And when I go into work, I always make sure to choose the seat near the window because I love being able to look out at the view. You spend a hell of a lot of time at your desk. So it's worth spending a few minutes making sure that it works for you and maximizes your happiness, productivity, and focus. Now, I want to make two things clear. The first is that I do not expect you to implement all of these, especially not all at once. And the second thing is that some of these tools might not actually be relevant for you. Some people love to work in mess, but others don't. Some people love to work outside, but some don't. So your action steps for today are all based around auditing your workspace and working out the changes that will work best for you. So step one is to work out your positives and negatives. What do you like? What helps you perform at your best? What improves your focus? On the other hand, what don't you like? What distracts you? What current problems are you having with your productivity related to your desk setup. Grab a piece of paper or your notes app and just write down a list of these. You can even drop them in the comments below. Step two is to decide on some changes to increase or keep the positives and decrease or address the negatives. This is where the six tools really come in handy. So maybe you need to start a decluttering habit. Maybe you want to move yourself closer to a window. It could be investing in a monitor or a laptop stand or just adding some plants and candles and personal touches to your desk. Step three is to schedule in a time to action these changes or just do them right now. The only way to make sure that they happen is to intentionally schedule the time. And I just have to say, I am blown away by the community that is forming on this YouTube channel. You are all so supportive and I appreciate that you're here so, so much. So if there are any other videos that you would love to see, please comment them down below. But otherwise, I will see you next week.